Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us for the second instalment of the Life at Clough podcast series. I'm Gillian Formenton, your host and Engineering Director for Clough. This series of podcasts explores the exciting world of Clough and the industry-leading initiatives and programs we've developed to support our people, featuring special guests from across the business. So today we're talking about something very near and dear to my heart, the partnership between Clough and Engineers Australia. So let's get into it. Last year, Clough signed a three-year partnership agreement with Engineers Australia that provides our engineers with a streamlined pathway to chartership, which, as a proud chartered engineer myself, I can say is an amazing opportunity, not only for engineers, but for the entirety of Clough and our future growth. So I have a couple of very special guests with me today, two very newly chartered engineers, Vidya Sadukran and Bernie Bayo. So Vidya, she's chartered in electrical construction and leadership engineering, and Bernie is chartered in electrical engineering. So firstly, congratulations to you both on becoming chartered. It is like it's it's just as important as when you graduated, and maybe even more so. <laughs> Thank you for taking that process. And I also really appreciate that you've offered up your <laughs> your experience today um, to talk to us about what that that process was like, but also why you engaged in it and why it's important to you. So look, we might just start by giving you a chance to introduce yourself and just say a little bit about your role at Clough. Maybe we'll start with you, Bernie. Yeah, can do. Thanks Mm -hmm. thanks for having us first, Gillian. Um, So my name's Bernie. I'm an electrical engineer at Clough. I've been at Clough for a little over a year now, um, and I've predominantly been on the Woodside PES team, Production Engineering Services. So that's delivering various scopes for Woodside's onshore and offshore assets. Uh, but more recently in the, I'd say the past month, I've moved to the Waitsia team uh, just to provide some engineering support uh, as they sort of reach the final stages of construction. Okay, great, perfect. And how long ago did you graduate from your engineering degree? Uh, it's been six years now. So I graduated at the end of 2016 from UWA. Okay, great. Excellent. Okay, thank you. And Vidya, what about you? What are you up to at Clough? Um, so I'm um, an electrical engineer, um, similar to Bernie, uh, currently working uh, in the PES team. I've um, been with Clough for uh, about a year and a half now. Uh, Phil's been here for a long time. Um, and yeah. Okay, great. Great. Thank you. And then maybe I'm um, back to you for, for a moment, Bernie. Tell us a bit about your journey to becoming an engineer. You know, we'll get into like the process after, you know, like graduating and, and getting those first few years, few years of experience. But what, what had you choose engineering? Like why, why is that a career for you? Yeah, so when, when I think back to it, I think there were two main drivers behind it. So the first one being my dad was an engineer and a lot of our family friends were engineers as well. And looking at them, I thought it was, it was pretty exciting. They had so many various different roles, worked in a lot of different industries um, so, so I really thought sort of like a choose your own adventure. You can sort of do everything um, once you go into engineering. And then the second thing was that I was quite good at maths and physics during school. So I think naturally when you're good at something, you tend to enjoy it a bit more as well. So I think that was a good fit for engineering. It was kind of a natural choice for you. Yeah. Sort of yeah. Okay, great. Right. Yeah. Thank you. And what about yourself, Vidya? Like, what, why, why engineering? What sparked your interest in engineering um, as a career? As, as a kid growing up, like, I've always enjoyed um, problem solving, mathematics. Um, my family background have always been in the construction and engineering line. Granddad was an electrician. Um, dad was in the construction industry. And my brother, my husband, everyone's an engineer of some sort. So I've always... Uh, when I, after high school, had to choose a course, um, I was instantly drawn to engineering. Um, I thought that's where I belong, and and true enough, like I, I do feel comfortable here. Okay, good. Well, you're both very good at it, so <laughs> good choices. And you know, people often ask me that why an engineer, and for me, it was like I, I often felt like I didn't really have any other choices. It was just like so obvious, like what we call a no-brainer. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you've got your interests in that way, and then I like like you said too, Bernie, about it is a bit choose your own adventure. You can yeah. do what really you can take you wherever. Mm. Okay, yeah. great. Well, let's talk a bit about the credentialing program. So, just a little bit of background for those people who aren't so familiar with Engineers Australia. So, Engineers Australia is an Australian professional body and it's not for profit organisation. 
And the purpose of Engineers Australia is to advance the science and practice of engineering to, for the benefit of the community. Uh, it's a peak body for the engineering profession in Australia, and there's about 115,000 members now, and it really does form being the voice of the profession of engineering. Now, full disclosure, I've had a lot to do with Engineers Australia. I'm um, I've a past president of the WA, so the West Australian um, Division Committee, and I'm currently on the Engineering Congress group, which is the um, the I guess the leadership level for volunteers of Engineers Australia that um, meets regularly in Melbourne or wherever the, wherever the meetings are. Um, so, uh, and, and I am, you know, like definitely a, not only a contributor but a real support for Engineers Australia really being the voice as a profession, like 115,000 members is a lot of engineers. And I, I also feel that the chartering of engineers is a really, really important step in our career. In Western Australia, we will soon be required to register as engineers, and I, my personal opinion is that can't come soon enough. Other states around Australia have already been um, registering engineers for a long time. I think Queensland was first with the RPQ program. So Engineers Australia is not the only way of getting to the point where you can be registered, but it's certainly the easiest and the one that Clough has chosen to help streamline the processes. So I'd like to hear from you both about, you know, well, what what did you, when, when we, because you were both getting to the point where you would have been ready to consider being chartered when we when we introduced the program, how did that occur to you um, and what made you kind of be one of the first adopters of, of really making sure that you, you got credential? Maybe we'll start with you first, Vidya. Like, what, what, what did you think about the engineering workforce credentialing program and what had you hop on in? For me, uh, obtaining chartership have, has has always been a goal for me. Like uh, I wasn't entirely sure at that time, like a procedure. Um, but then I saw an opportunity offered through the Clough EA program, and I thought, oh, this is the best opportunity like I can go for. So I attended a presentation, read the materials that were offered, also got in touch with the EA representative, uh, and that that literally let the path to attaining chartership less complicated and less stressful for me. So it was definitely an uh, uh, easy path to follow. Very good. Yeah. Very smart decision. What about yourself, Bernie? What did you think when you heard that this was a, a coming opportunity and that it would be available for you to get chartered? Yeah, well, for me, because um, Engineering Australia was quite a visible organisation already, um, they did go to my university, UWA, and as a graduate at my previous company, they also held some information sessions. Um, I have attended some of the networking sessions as well. I knew about the organisation. I knew about getting chartership. So... As a graduate, it was sort of a stretch goal for me, um, but then as things do happen, you sort of get busy and it falls to the side. So once Clough kind of came with the EWC program, I thought, yeah, that's a no-brainer. I'm hopping right on. Yeah, very good. And I was excited about it too. I mean, I got chartered for 28 years ago, I think it is now, yeah. quite a long time, <laughs> showing my age. Um, and it was pretty much, I mean, I had a good relationship with Engineers Australia. They also did come to my university and show us where we would need to take those steps after yep. we were kind of four or five years into our um, into our engineering practice. Um, but it was quite hard work to work out exactly what I needed to do. So what I want to, yeah, what, what was it like working through the process yep. of becoming chartered yep. and working with the other professional engineer, engineers okay. here too? Because I know you're chief electrical engineer who yes. are committed to the process as well. Yes. What 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 was that like working through that with um, the more senior engineers here and how did that help with the engineer engineering credentialing process? Yeah, so um, I had a lot of support through the mentoring program and also from my peers uh, within the electrical uh, team. Mm -hmm. um, they were all very um, encouraging and motivating because they have gone through that process as well. Mm -hmm. So um, they gave me some tips and tricks like to help go through with the process. Um, I found the process um, not too stressful because like I gave myself ample time. I went through the presentation couple of times to make sure that I was doing the right thing um, and then uh, completing the assessment and preparing for the interviews. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you. What about yourself, Bernie? What was it like for you? Yeah, like Video mentioned, mm -hmm. just the massive amount of support at Clough. You've got um, all sorts of people, varying backgrounds, varying experience and in varying stages of their chartership mm -hmm. journey, 
and fellowship journey as well. So you've got access to all of them, those people at Clough. Uh, but I'd probably also add, yeah, just the initial information sessions that um, was run by Engineers Australia here at Clough. They really sort of guided you and set you up on the right path of what you needed. They gave you some reference documents, some examples of what they're expecting. Mm -hmm. The process itself was very streamlined. Um, the, they So CLAF has a contact point at Engineers Australia, and you can ask them any questions that you might have, and that was invaluable. And then also just the financial support that CLAF provide. They help you with your membership and the fees. And, yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. really great. Yeah, I mean, it, it's um, it's a good deal for Clough as well. So Clough, um, traditionally, we've um, supported engineers in their professional membership. Yep. Um, but because of the agreement, we actually get it a bit cheaper as well. So yeah, win-win. It, it, it is. It's <laughs> yeah. a real win-win. And then, yep. of course, we get the, um, the added benefit of having those professionals at Engineers Australia directly supporting our people. I mean, it's like. Yeah, it's like I don't know, world's best kept secret. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's very, so that's very good. But talk a little bit about because um, people often ask, um, and at the beginning of the program, I know a few people asked me, you know, say I'm already really busy. I don't see how I can possibly do this as well. What, what was it like actually dealing with becoming chartered? What, I mean, because you were very, very busy as well, right? Was, was it extra stressful, or did it work in well with what you're already doing? Uh, yeah, uh, because mm -hmm. the process was so streamlined. It, for me, it wasn't actually too stressful. Um, so I guess running through what the process was, it, it consists of sort of building up your CPD, your Chartered Professional Development Log of 150 hours, and then collecting evidence and statement, um, demonstrating the 16 elements of competency, and then finally going into your interview where you sort of show off to your assessor how you've met them and how you maintain that stuff. So I think the biggest sort of um, the biggest hunk of work for me was the CPD log. Um, so that's continue continual professional development, demonstrating that you're developing yourself as an engineer. Yep. Correct. Because if you're not on top of that, 150 hours is is a lot. Um, but that's over three years. Uh, but I just say baby steps, little at a time. And put some time aside maybe every week and just say, I want to um, get one or two hours on my CPD. I want to have a think um, about one or two of these elements. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, your material will be nearly there. Yeah. And <laughs> that's a, It's actually something that is often the barrier for people getting chartered. They see that 150 hours and it just seems insurmountable. It's, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, my um, relationship's always been if you're an active professional engineer, you're doing that anyway. It's just a matter of recording what you're doing. Yeah. Um, in fact, I've been now, again, showing my age, but my CPD has been audited, I think, three times in my career. And each time I have the concern, oh, maybe I haven't got it all together and I haven't, but there's like hundreds and hundreds. I don't think I've ever been audited with less than 500 hours. Like, And I am a bit of a development junkie, right? <laughs> but, um, and it's interesting what things you can count too, like internal development, like um, professional updates, um, information sessions, lunch and learns, yeah. and that's even not in, even in counting all the content that Engineers Australia makes available and other organisations that we can we can count. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. What about yourself, Vivian? What was it like? Was it hard to do alongside what you're already doing, or did it kind of join you know um, join in with your normal work? Yeah, I, I uh, I'm the same um, as Bernie. Uh, I I didn't find the process itself entirely stressful for me because um, I actually gave myself ample time um, to to obtain that goal. Um, so uh, with with managing work and the program, like um, because I started my my aim was to you know complete um, the chartership. March this year. Mm -hmm. So I started my preparation October, starting to build up the CPD log. So every day, uh, not every day, but um, um, uh, every week or so, like I would put in some time after work to build that CPD log, mm -hmm. um, whether it's through the networking events or lunch and learns or um, just online videos um, that, that actually um, are on the EA website. Um, just going through them. And then um, I actually also spent uh, my entire Christmas break um, preparing for the self-assessment. 
um, and then preparing for the interview. Um, so um, because I gave myself enough time, um, I was ready by January, and, and oh, wow. there was an opportunity. So, <laughs> so so yeah, so that that worked out well. So um, it wasn't entirely stressful. It it uh, that hundred fifty hours, like Bernie said, like it may seem you know, a lot, but once you get into the rhythm of it, like every single thing that you learn or you go for training, you know, and then you put it down. So um, yeah. before you know it, it's all, all captured. Yeah, I think everyone I've ever spoken to about the credentialing process, because I've supported a few people even before I came to Clough, I yeah. would meet with people and support them through the process. Um, and I was an assessor a long time ago in the, like, you know, the professional competencies. And I don't think there's ever been anyone that said something other than, Oh wow! I'm surprised how easy that was. Once I've done it right, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, it, it's quite, and it's fun, right? Because you, you know most of us are really interested in learning, and it's yeah. all about learning and developing. Yeah. I, I want to um, hear from, and I know why being credentialed, and um, you know, like I, I was a brownie guy. I don't like any brownie guy badges. <laughs> you know, like it really does feel like a building of the competencies, but also it's to demonstrate to. The world a bit like the the importance of engineering and um, the integrity of all our fields, right? But I think what, why why is it important to you to be a chartered engineer? Yeah, you because know, there are many people in the community that aren't chartered and probably never will. You know, they'll manage to get around the registration process somehow mm-hmm. and then retire before it matters, right? But for you both, you you're chartered and, and ready to go. So why is it important to you? Maybe starting with you, Bernie. Yeah, so for me, it's just a way to demonstrate that I'm a professional engineer. I've reached a certain standard and level of competency. Um, And then adding to that, as the credential is nationally, but also internationally recognized, it opens so many doors to go overseas to work. And yeah. Yeah, Yeah, very good. No, perfect. It's an overseas element exciting as well. Yeah. Particularly as class now, just, you know, rejoining with an international organization. Um, there's opportunities exactly, for club yeah. engineers to work overseas in the coming years, and you, you're both set up to be, you know, recognised as professional engineers in, I think, it's something like 100 countries in the world or something like that. Yeah. Great. What about yourself, Vidya? Why, why is it important to you? Hmm. Uh, it's important to me because um, having worked in Brisbane, RPEQ was was important to to um, obtain that. And then, but at that time, like, you know, process was a bit difficult. Um, but really, like, um, the the biggest benefit for me uh, of being chartered is to really inspire and mentor others in their journey in engineering. Um, and if that in any way I can uh, help them or, you know, give some support, like how I receive support from my peers and um, through mentorship as well, like um, it really does help. Uh, and like what Bernie mentioned, like, you know, being um, recognized um, nationally um, as a competent uh, engineer, I think that's important. Mm. Yes. Yeah, very good. I, I love how proud you are both <laughs> of your profession. Because Being I am, me, yeah. Too. yeah. Um, so, would you have what advice would you have for um, first young engineers, right? So, engineers that are just maybe finishing their degree and graduating, what what advice would you have to that for them about becoming chartered, but also for setting themselves up so that being chartered is even possible for them, that they're getting the right experience. So, Bernie, what what, what what advice would you have for very young engineers just starting out on their journey? Yeah, I'd say start early in uh, reading through the Code of Ethics for Engineers Australia, getting familiar with those elements, those 16 elements, and then I guess, yeah, because it is quite a long time until you can go through that chartership process. It's just about keeping it in the back of your mind and then maybe when you're three to four years in, you're, you've already got that foundation there for you and, and then you can start recording it and, and then getting your material in order. And then by the time you reach five or six years, you just say, oh, I've got everything here. I'm ready to go. Yeah. yeah very good. So so, you, so you're suggesting like do the research and get familiar with it so you've got like a map of the future. Correct. So that yeah. your experience, yeah. you probably find too that, as your, because you have many options as a as an engineer, like there'll be projects to choose from. You can choose yeah. the ones that are going to give you the experience that you need to fulfil the criteria that you've got. To yeah, 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 and it right. sort of acts as like a guidance on how to, because when you graduate, you know, what's a professional engineer? How should I act in the workforce? It gives a really good guidance on how you can like 
um, ethically promote sustainability, add value to your workplace, to the community, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Right. Thank you. What about yourself, Idia? What advice would you have for young engineers that are starting out? Mm, I would say get get involved um, with Engineers Australia. Um, you know, be be part of um, the team and and always seek advice like from um, the peers. You know, it's I think it's important like for them. Uh, Although it's a um, five years before they can actually apply for um, chartership and that, um, but I think it's important um, to keep a record of all their experiences so that when it comes to that stage, it's not so much of a, oh my God, what did I do in the last five years? Like, you know, so um, if a constant uh, record is kept, like, okay, these are the projects, this is what I, I um, took out of that Um has it met the, um, you know, the um, um, code of ethics, um, uh, sixteen uh, competencies? Like, it's it's a lot to to go through as a young grad because you're still fairly new. Um, but I think if that sort of procedure is in place, like over time, you know, um, when they get to that stage. It, it's a lot more simpler. Yeah, sets you up for yeah. Yeah, success there. Yeah. It's a good practice as an engineer anyway, keeping keeping good records where you yeah. have to encourage, <laughs> encourage that. Yeah, and, yeah. and because young engineers, um, they tend to also, you know, like move from projects or, you know, like if, if they have all their material in, in tech, like it, it, it's good, you know. Yeah, yeah, very I'd good. I'd say, and I'd also add, it also helps uh, joining a company that so visibly supports mm. um, the credentialing and chartership because mm. uh, you might go some places where they, they say, no, that's not important. Why are you worrying about it? Yeah. 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 I think that's a really, really good advice because my first um, career role was with an operator and I've got nothing to, I mean, operator experience can be a good part of an engineer's experience, yeah. but it's not something that's a, a priority for the operator to say, you know, they just need to. Get the gas out, which is what I was doing. You know. So, yeah, no, that's really good. So um, Engineers Australia does provide support, um, but there's nothing like having that support as well as the company support Correct. and making yeah. sure you're yeah. working with yeah. professional yeah. engineers who can, can guide you. Yeah. I've always thought that probably the most important part of being credentialed is actually the questions about ethics because, you know, how we operate together ethically is very important. Obviously, we need to, you know, be demonstrating that we have the, the technical capability and experience to be able to say, hey, yeah, I'm a professional um, and chartered engineer. But I'd just like you to share a bit about what you maybe learnt during the process with regards to the ethics of engineering and the importance of engineering engineers operating ethically in the, in, in industry. Yeah, so regarding the ethics, it's... Um... I guess in your normal operation, it might fall, fall to the side as well. But if you're if you're constantly sort of keep it in the forefront of your mind, I need to, I I need to be an ethical engineer. That's that's mm-hmm. how I should be practicing. Um, then I guess it just becomes sort of natural to you then as well. Yeah, yeah very good. Kind of come just comes part very, of your natural practice. Correct. Yeah. 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 yeah very good. Yeah. What about yourself, Idia? Did you learn anything? Um, with regards to the ethics of engineering through the process? Mm. You know, there will be a situation where, whether in a project or in a team, where, you know, your ethics are questioned. Um, and that's where if if you understand and you know, um, you know, the code of ethics, it, don't be afraid to, to say that, no, this is not right, you know. I think it's important to uh, always stand up and... and uh, voice up your opinion as well at the same time in a team or in a project um, how how to go about uh, doing that as well yeah very good yeah and I think it's something that you only learn in practice isn't it yeah. when you're challenged with those ideas and you know like because particularly in a project environment there's all sorts of competing challenges where there's cost and schedule yeah. and what the client wants and yeah. you know what your bosses want and yeah. some of those bosses aren't necessarily engineers or have the understanding of what you can deal with technically yeah. um so yeah that's something that i think this process really supports because really that's you know that's our our main job is to you know like improve you know you could say that we're out to improve life on the planet through big engineering works and we can only do that if we work together in ways that work for the bigger picture and which is where the ethics yeah. come in. Something so, that always um, sort of resonated with me is I think someone mentioned it before but it was like 
uh, ethical decisions in the short term can be very unpopular, but in the long term, people will, will come around and see that you've stuck with what you believe in, you've tried to act ethically, and they'll see that you've done done good. Yeah. Uh, that's really yeah. well put because it's often the job of an engineer to be able to have that foresight Correct, to be, yeah. see the consequences of our decisions and be able to put that together in a way that is smart for the company, the project, the client, all of us. Yes, I often see it as a, as a profound relationship to what is actually so and the consequences of what we're responsible for. Yeah. yeah. Well, really great work. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. Um, the people listening to this will be people that are at all stages of their um, engineering career, um, but but likely to be in the inquiry about, um, well, what's possible when it comes to being chartered. And I, I'm really thrilled that you've both shared the not only the process, but also the importance of being a chartered professional engineer and your pride in the profession. So thank you both. Bernie and Vidya for, for joining us today. Thank you. You've been listening to the second Life at Clough podcast. So please look out for our next instalment where we'll bring you another snapshot of what it is like to be working at Clough. Thank you.